Good morning. Uh, welcome to the Lord's House on this uh, first uh, Sunday in Lent. And as you can see, the uh, colors have changed. And we've gone to purple, and for those of you who may or may not know the color purple and its purpose, um, one is that it's a royal color. And you put a royal color on a king, and Jesus is a king. Uh, so we, it's, it's about his royalty. But it's also connected to when he was being crucified before that, he was uh, scourged and beaten, and then they put a robe, a purple robe on him. Uh, so it's oftentimes the color of Lent because of that as well. But I would have you draw your attention to one more thing, or a few more things, is that our, our super frontal, this is our old super frontal, and it's beautiful. And in the center, you have a crown and a cross, and those two things oftentimes seem opposed to each other. But I'm going to explain to you here, because at the same time, you have on my stole, you have the crown on the left side of Christ and the, and the, or the, 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 the crown of thorns and then on the right side a, a royal crown. So what you're seeing is the two states of Christ. Right? When Christ was in heaven before he came down to be man, he was glorified so he was a king uh, at that point in a sense. He comes down and bears the humiliation of being a human and dies so this is his crown that we see, the, uh, the crown of thorns. When he ascends back into heaven, now he wears his glorious crown again in the flesh and blood of Jesus. So God is, is crowned in glory. So we see the two states here, and it especially brings us that when we're talking about Lent, because Jesus, the Son of God, is going to be crucified. Right? So all of this plays into us as we remember our time through this Lenten season. So keep that in mind as you go in there. Uh, that, that Christ is man and God, and, and, and he receives glory in both senses now. All right, small, uh, small thing on that. Now, the sermon will be shorter. <laughs> but uh, we, will, uh, we will begin our service, uh, this divine service setting one on page 151. But we have our choir here, and bell choir here today, and they're going to lead us in a, in a hymn of invocation as well. So... Um, we're going to let them do that, and then we'll have the ringing of the bells and the singing of our first hymn, and then we'll have uh, the greeting in Christ at that point. So if you guys would like to play that, that would be great.
That was beautiful, Deb. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And well, and the, it wasn't just Deb. You had all the players up there too, as singers. So thanks be to God for that. Uh, now let us rise and greet one another with God's peace. rise, turning to page 151 for our invocation and our confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. We take a moment on silent reflection on our, our own sin and the Word of God. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God.
given his son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you. No plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, and the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated for the readings. The Old Testament reading for the first Sunday in Lent is taken from Genesis chapter 22, beginning at verse 1. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. He said, Take your own son, your, own, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering on the mountains and of which I will tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering, and rose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes, and saw the place from afar. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. I and the boy will go over there and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took it, and he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went, both of them, together. And Isaac said to his father Abraham, My father. And he said to him, Here I am, my son. He said, Behold, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they 
went both of them together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built the altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar on top of the wood. Then Abraham reached out his hand and took the knife to slaughter his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. He said, do not lay your hand on the boy or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, on the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. This is the word of the Lord. Turning now to the front of our hymnals, we will responsibly sing Psalm 25, uh, verses 1 through 10. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. Indeed, no one who waits for you shall be put to shame. They shall be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O oh, Lord. Teach me your path. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love. For they have been from old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness. For those who keep his covenant and his testimonies, glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our epistle reading is taken from James chapter 1, beginning at verse 12. Uh, and this is also the basis for our sermon today. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin. 
And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my, bro my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. Of this, of his own, he will, of his own will he, of his own will, of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. This is the word of the Lord. We rise for our Lenten verse and the gospel. St. Mark, the first chapter. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth, Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descend on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my beloved Son, with you I am well pleased. The Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee, proclaiming the gospel of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. This is the gospel of the Lord. Turning now to page 656, we have the joy of singing our, our hymn of the day.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our text for our sermon is taken from our epistle reading in James, and the sermon is entitled, Trials and or Gifts. Trials and, and temptations. These words are what we as Christians at times use to describe life as we know it, right? Trials and temptations. When we say it, it almost sounds cliche, right? It's always what we say. It becomes so cliche that when we gather as Christians, it becomes kind of, for lack of a better word, a, a pity party. Right? We get together and we have pity parties as each one of us shares our trials of this life. Right? The trials may be health issues or relationship issues or financial problems or whatever they might be. They go on and on and on. Nobody really wants to discuss temptations, though, because these are the ugly things about ourselves that we don't want to let out. But everyone has temptations that they fall prey to. They might not be the same for everyone, but we will fall nonetheless. Is this how James talks about trials and temptations in our text today? Hardly. He, he comes at them not in a negative sense. He doesn't come at them in a negative way. Not as, as, as if something was going to drag you down but just the opposite. He talks about the only answer to the trial and temptation that we have. We seem to dwell on the bad, but he opens up to us the good, to dwell on Christ. He talks about what God is doing and what he has done in the midst of our trials and temptations. Jesus reminds us and that the giver of every good and perfect gift is on our side. Even in the trials and temptations of the world, that makes a difference. Knowing that Jesus is on our side. Kind of sounds hard to believe, right? Jesus, uh, uh, Jesus is on our side. And James tells us in his letter early on, if you were to read to verses 2 and 3, he would also say, Count it all joy. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. Joy? Is that how I'm supposed to take this? Come on, I remember some of those toughest trials and tribulations in my life. In the midst of it, there was no joy. In the midst of it, I was not happy. Joy. <laughs> well, I would have to call it something else. But that is not what James is saying to us, is it? Not what he's saying in verse 12. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. When he has stood the test of time, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. You see, God uses trials to strengthen our faith. And this is a well-known fact, a well-known fact that few Christians seem to get stronger during the easy times. When times are easy, we actually tend to leave God and pursue our own desires. But when times get tough, we flee from our brokenness and cling to God. As we cling through worship and prayer, we experience God keeping his promise to us as he sustains us during our trials. God is the giver of every good and perfect gift. And that includes the ability to take the trials and the sufferings of this world and use them for our good and to strengthen our faith in him and in his dear son. For Jesus knows something about trials from having no place to lay his head. 
uh, to being arrested, beaten, and tried, and nailed, to having a crown of thorns put on his head, and a spear thrust in his side. He knows something about suffered trials beyond what maybe we could even imagine. And yet, where was his eye? Where was he always looking? He was always looking to his Heavenly Father to sustain him through it all. During the very trials God ordained him to suffer, he endures all of it, not for himself, but for you, to save you. In perfect obedience to his Father, he suffered all, And all the while, he had perfect faith in his Father and his Father's plan for the salvation of you. In our time of trial, the Lord is there with us, knowing exactly what we're going through and even identifying with us. He does more than sympathize with us. He is the one who gives us a strength and faith through it all. He is the one who will bring us through the trials of this life and give us everlasting life. The crown of life is ours because our dear Savior suffered the trials of Calvary for you and me. So the next time a trial comes along, remember your Savior. When you're wondering where God is in the midst of your suffering, then go to the cross and look at the empty cross. Or look at the cross with Christ on it. Because both reveal your Savior. He is there to give you his comfort, his understanding, his power, and his victory. Go to his word where he will speak to you. Go to his table at this altar and receive the body and blood where he will forgive you and strengthen you. Through all trials. So much for trials. Let's talk about tribulations. How is that? Or not tribulations, temptations. That's the better one, sorry. Now you can probably follow a little better, right? Because who wants to talk about your temptations? I do. <laughs> but nonetheless, how is that a positive? How is going through temptation a positive? Well, first, the temptations are not God's fault. And certainly our falling into temptation are not God's fault. We would like to blame him for it, right? This is our sinful mind. We want to blame him for all this. He is the one who created me this way. With the desires there, right? To love and to hunger and whatever else desire that is good there. Well, that is true. He filled you with those desires. But he did not fill you with the desire to abuse those gifts. That came later, after the fall into sin. And so whether we like it or not, we cannot blame God for our temptation or for our falling into sin. James makes it clear. We look no further than ourselves for the problem of temptation. He says each person is tempted when he is lured, when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then the desire, when it is conceived, gives birth to sin. And then when sin is fully grown, it brings forth death. Each person, each own desire, because of the fall and because of Satan, temptation is always around us all the time. Remember when God told Cain, it is always crouching at your door. So we struggle with it. We feel guilty when we fall into it. We make up our minds to defeat it. Right? We pull up our bootstraps. Well, we can't even pull up our bootstraps. When we fail to trust God and trust ourselves, it'll get much worse. So God to the rescue. God to the rescue, bringing his good and perfect gifts. He brings us the message, 
the word of truth, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel that tells us that God gave us the best and good and perfect gift that saves us. The one gift that saves us, His Son. And He knows something about trials. He knows something about temptations. And it is not just the temptations that we might have remembered when Jesus was in the wilderness with the gospel. He was tempted even more than that. Probably, I would say, his greatest temptation was to avoid the cross. When Peter, remember when Peter was up there on the mountain and when Jesus was going to be led away, Peter pulls out his sword, and what does Jesus say? Put away your sword. Don't you know I could call down 12 legions of angels and all this would stop? Put away your sword. Jesus is tempted to suffer and die and he could call down the angels at any time to keep it from happening. But as true God and true man, and for the joy of your salvation, he overcame that temptation. He went to the cross for you and for me to pay all of the times that we have fallen into temptation or run headlong into it. He is the only one that can forgive our failed temptations and he is the only one that can defeat the temptation within us you see we are his children his first fruits as James calls it we have been reborn by our baptism so what does that mean for us we belong to God and we are his special possessions we are his special loves and he sent his son to die for you When we have forgiveness, we have it at all times. Always. Always forgiven in Christ. We receive the crown of life at the end, the crown of glory which has no end. We receive heaven itself. And we receive the power we need to get through this world, through this world of trials and temptations. Where does that happen? How do I receive this power? What is he doing about your temptations? Scripture tells us that God the Father and God the Son has sent you his Holy Spirit. And what is the Holy Spirit doing in you? He is always pointing you to Christ. He is always trying to feed you with his word and sustain you and remind you who you belong to. He's always trying to strengthen you in the promises of his constant presence and understanding of what you're going through because Jesus himself has went through it. And he gives you his victory. And even if you fail, he will pick you up again and begin the process all over again. Picking you up, forgiving you, and strengthening you by the power of his word so that you can fight again the trials and temptations next time. He is always trying to remind you that through his written and spoken word, as we talk to one another in Christ, there is the strengthening of our faith, and there comes the forgiveness of sins, and there comes the reminder of our eternal glory in Christ in the midst of it all. God knows all about your trials and temptations. He sent His only Son to suffer them with you and for you. And now in the life of the church, He gives you all that you need so that you can make it through these trials and temptations and receive the crown that Jesus has earned for you. Jesus gives this crown of glory to all of you. It is his joy to give you this crown of glory, this crown of everlasting life. So whatever trial or tribulation you are going through or have gone through or will go go through, it is for the glory of God and it is for your joy because it will produce strength in Christ in two ways. When you make it through, 
who are you going to glorify and give hope and joy to? Who are you going to glorify and speak well of? <laughs> Christ for pulling you through. And if you don't make it through, guess where you will be? In the new creation with your crown. So guess what it is for us? It's win-win. Whether we live or whether we die, it's win-win. And if we make it through the temptations and the tribulations, let us give glory to God for Him pulling us through. And let us give glory to God for that eternal crown of salvation that awaits all of us who believe in Jesus. Amen. We rise now turning to page 159 as we continue with our confession of faith according to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord, in the midst of this life, we are surrounded by many temptations. Fix our eyes on our Lord Jesus, who bore temptation for us and resisted to the point of death and, bring, and brings us through the evils of this fallen world to dwell with you forever. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you placed the wood of the cross on the back of your only begotten Son, that as the promised offspring of Abraham, he might possess the gates of hell. Bless, we pray, his church and all who are called to preach and teach within her. Give them certainty that, the hell, cannot, that hell cannot prevail against them, and so embolden them in faith to trample every evil power of the enemy underfoot. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, preserve all catechumens and their teachers, all children and their parents, and every Christian home from the assaults of the evil one. As your son overcame Satan in the de desert by the word of God, so also give us the victory through Christ and his word. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Father of lights, from whom come every good and perfect gift, as it comes down from heaven above, Keep us from being enticed by our own desires to misuse your gifts. Help us use them rightly in service to you and our neighbor. Be with our president and all our leaders, that we may be governed wisely and justly for the good of your people in this present generation and in the one to come. Lord, in your mercy. Most high God, our refuge in every trouble, you have promised to hear when we call you we when we call to you. Command your angels to guard our brothers and sisters and all who suffer in our midst, especially Catherine, Jane, Heidi, Irene, Joe, Suzanne, Merlin, Jamie, Chris, Sherry, Bill, Tracy, Sean, Ryan, Dennis, and Tammy. Keep them from every evil that can befall the body, mind, and soul. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, the time is fulfilled and your kingdom is at hand. Your beloved Son comes to us here at the altar. By your Spirit, grant that we receive him in repentance and believe the gospel proclaimed in his body given and his blood shed for us. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, see how the adversary continually afflicts us and walks about as a roaring lion seeking to devour us. We implore you for the sake of the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
to help us by the grace of the Holy Spirit and to strengthen our hearts by your word that our enemy would not prevail over us, but instead that we may abide forever in your grace and be preserved to life everlasting. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Congregation may be seated as we gather our, our offering. I ask that you grab those attendance and guest books located in the center aisles and please fill those out. rise for our offertory found on page right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you holy lord almighty father everlasting god through jesus christ our lord who accomplished the salvation of mankind by the tree of the cross that where death arose their life also might rise again and that the serpent who overcame by the tree of the garden might likewise by the tree of the cross be overcome Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created, and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh, 
to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, the words of our Lord. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Welcome to the table of the Lord.
rise for our post-communion canticle found on page 164. Thank the Lord. Thanks to Almighty God that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive his benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Congregation may be seated for a few announcements. First, I look for the congregation. Is there anything that needs to be brought forward? All right, well, then I will make some up. Uh, not made up. Uh, Caring Hearts, that's our funeral luncheon volunteers. They're looking for assistance. So if that's something that you could do, it's not mandatory every time. But if you have the ability to help, that would be great. Also, if you looked at the elders in here, uh, we, are, we are vacant one elder. We only have eight instead of nine. Uh, so if your last name is from church to Ernie, that doesn't mean you don't have an elder. Any one of the other elders would be willing to serve you. So uh, any one of those other eight guys that are, you're comfortable with calling if you need anything, uh, call one of those guys and they will take care of you. Um, also, uh, I encourage you to join us uh, for Lenten uh, services, those are at 10 o'clock in the morning and uh, 7 o'clock at night. 
And if I'm encouraging you to go to the services, I will encourage you to go to the dinners, right? Because that's beforehand. So come to dinner uh, from 5.30 to 7, and we will, we will gather together and have a meal and, and grow together in Christ, but also grow together in our friendships and fellowships. It's a good time, and it's a good place to be. All right, any other announcements that I failed to give? Go in peace and serve the Lord.